Psalms. Say Psalms. Psalms for the summer. Say Psalms for the summer. There are certain, certain books that are good for a certain particular time. We read in the book of Luke and in the book of Matthew about the birth of Jesus Christ because that particular story in Pericope and how those stories evolve and start off the Gospels of Matthew and Luke is appropriate for us during the time of Christmas, say time of Christmas. And so we read about the birth of Jesus Christ and certain books are good for me during certain time. There are those who enter into the new year and they are interested in how the Bible starts off and so they read the book of Genesis, say Genesis. And there's a few of us like me and Rodney who is smart enough, wise enough, strange enough to read the book of Revelations during these latter days because for us they give us the prophetic walk and talk of God as to what is going to happen in the end times it talks about how churches move away from being the kind of church that Jesus Christ had created them to be to becoming a church that becomes stray like the church of Laodicea and it talks about how at the end times young people will get uh, weaker but wiser and systems will fall all apart even the family and even the community and even the nation and ultimately uh, the world will move away from him but in the midst of all of that Jesus will always be in control and we see Jesus through the book and the lens of John in the book of Revelation but then there are times to which we want to kind of relax they relax after all that is what summertime is all about it's about being laid back, see, being laid back. Uh, the problem with being laid back is that sometimes we get too laid back, especially in the summertime during the hot weather, we get too laid back. And so uh, we have to try to do something to, uh, to, to guide you, to lead you, and to prep you for uh, the week coming. And so God has given us the book of Psalms. Say the book of Psalms. I still say that I love the book of Psalms when Psalms talk about who the Lord is in the 23rd chapter of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I love the Psalms. Blessed are those uh, who do this, that, and the other. It's just filled with good things. Say good things. And last week, it, it, it talked about some good things in uh, the first chapter, who, those who are blessed. Blessed is a man and woman who walketh not in the counsel of the what? Uh, ungodly, nor standeth in the way or the pathway of who? Nor sitteth in the seat of the what? For his delight and her delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it does he what? Does he what? Meditate day and night and then he or she shall be like a tree planted by the what? Rivers of water and whatever he or she does or doeth. Y'all remember? Shall what? He shall prosper. Well, I want to move on to the 119th Psalm. It's the longest Psalm in the entire book of Psalms. In fact, it's the longest book in the entire Bible. There's at least nearly 150, 150 verses. I was going to Facebook that out to you, but I, I felt you would have got lost in all of those scriptures and all of those verses. Uh, and so I said to myself, maybe I'll just wait until you come here on Sunday. That was a trick to get you here. And so you're now here. But the, the, the 119th Psalm is a very interesting Psalm. You almost have to read it in paragraphs form, though you do not find paragraphs form in the King James transla translation. And about every eighth verse is really where you need to read in the 119th Psalm down to about the 147th verse. But here, the writer, I believe, is David, say David. He's very interesting, as he has always been interesting. And he talks about the blessed person. Say the blessed person. The word blessed here means happy. Don't you want to be happy? Is there anybody in the house want to be blessed? 
Is there anybody in the house that want to be happy? There's only two people that want to be happy. Everybody else want to be sad. No problem. Sadness comes with ease. Happiness comes with work. And I'm going to just read to you for just a moment, if you allow me, in the Message Bible, Eugene Peterson Bible, because it's very difficult to read it in the King James translation. Rather challenging. And here's what David says. Say, David says. He says, you're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. Would you repeat after me? You're blessed when you stay on course. Just turn to your neighbor to the right of you and say, neighbor, stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed, say revealed by God. Now look at your neighbor behind you and say, neighbor, can you just stay on the right road? Say, neighbor, don't fool me. Say, neighbor, if you can't stay on the right road, just let me know and I'll walk with you. He says, you're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. Verse 2. He says, you're blessed when you follow his direction. Turn to your neighbor to the other side of you and say, neighbor, can you just follow his directions? And would you, would you answer them? Yes, I will. Doing your best, he says, to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road, he said. You, God, prescribe the right way to live. Say, you, God prescribed the right way to live. And so the psalmist says, now you expect us to live it. Say, God expects us to live it. And then he says in verse 5, all that my steps might be steady, keeping to the course you have set. Say, keeping to the course you have set then I'd never have any regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I thank you, God. You sp I thank you for speaking straight from your heart. I learned the pattern of your righteous ways. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Say, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And then he prays, don't ever walk off and leave me. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Don't ever, say don't ever, walk off and leave me. And then he speaks, Daniel, to the, to the millennium generation. Or should I call them the minimalist generation? Yes, the minimalist generation. He says, how can a young person live a clean life? He says, here's it. Be carefully reading the map of your word. And then down in verse 71, verse 71, he does not say God is good. He does not say God is great. He does not say God is perfect. But he says something about trouble. Say trouble. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's, talk, it's time to talk about trouble. He says these words. It is good for me to have been in trouble. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, can you believe that? It is good for me. How many of you believe that it's good for you to have been in trouble? trouble it is good for me to have been in trouble it, 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 it has been good for me to have gone through issues in my life it, it is good for me to have had watch it now the doctors say that you have an incurable disease and the psalmist says, 
it is good for me to have gone through that thing, to have been in trouble. Here, here's the context of the text. Here is a man who is going and looking into his past. He is traveling down historical boulevard and he looks on his yesterday and he starts to thinking about how far the Lord has brought him. And what he discovers is, is that he has not come through just green pastures and still waters, but rather there has been some rough times in his life that he has come through what someone has said in a song. He has come through on the rough side of the mountain. And what he discovers is, is that even coming through those kinds of scenario and situation that God has still been good to him. His life had not been a sheltered life. The contrary and adversity of contrary winds and adversity had come into his life suddenly. And there were times in which he had found himself coming down into the valley called the shadows of death. But he discovers something in the midst of his problem. This is somebody who is going through something right now. He has discovered that he have, may have been down, but he was never out. And what he discovers is, is that trouble don't last. I wish I had a witness in the house. <laughs> What he discovers is, is that problems are never permanent. That these things shall pass always. What he discovers is, is that trouble don't last always. And that's, can I be quick about it? And that sometimes God allows us to have painful situations. Sometimes God allows us to have trials and tribulations. Sometimes God allows us to have problems in our lives but he does not want us I wish I could tell it real quickly he does not want us to get caught up in the problems of life but what he wants us to see is not the problems of life but rather he wants us to see the problem solver say the problem solver what the psalmist discovers is, is that now that I've gone through some things and I've looked back over my life I've discovered that there were some good things that was working on my behalf that looked like they were the worst of things. He said, since I've been going through some things, I'm stronger, I'm wiser, so much wiser, I'm even better than I was before. Is there anybody in the house who can say because I've come through the mountains and I've come through valley experiences, that I've come through incrossable rivers, that I've come through unsolvable problems, that I've come through health issues, that I've come through mental imbalances, that I've had some depressed time in my life. I've discovered that I'm better now because I can handle life a little bit better because I've been through the storms of life. Sometimes God puts us in a storm so that we can know how to be I know how to handle our storms I wish I had a witness in the house you know you've got storm watchers but storm watchers are not afraid of storm because they have been inside of storms is there anybody in the house who will stand to stand up for two seconds and praise God that God brought you through the the storms of life. Is there anybody in the house who would say God is still good in the midst of my storm? Is there anybody in the house who can say that I'm bad and I'm better now because I've been through the storm and I know how to handle storms? Just turn to five people, give them a high five and say, neighbor, I know how to handle storms. Oh yeah, I know how to handle trouble. What, you may go to your seat. What he discovers is, is that what, a, what appeared to be losses was gain. What appeared to be loss was gain. What appeared to be a calamity, that's what he says in the King James translation, calamity, say, it's good for me to have had calamities. That's what he says. He says, I've come through calamities. Now listen to me. If you have not gone through a calamity, just keep on living. Your day is coming. If you haven't been through any funerals lately, don't get too cool, calm, and collective because there's a death coming your way. Turn to somebody and say, I know that's right. 
just because you got all the money in the bank today, there's a tomorrow coming also. Have I got a witness? Just because you've gone to the doctor every year and got a, a, a bill of health sent your way doesn't mean that you ain't going to never get sick. Uh, just because you're happy today does not mean that you're not going to be sad on tomorrow. The old folk used to say it this way, we are up today and down tomorrow. But the psalmist tells us how to get through the storms of life. He tells us how to say it is good that I have been in trouble. And what are the solutions to that? What, what is he trying to lead us to? He says to us, in essence, if you want to get through the troubles of life, anybody here is going through any trouble? Just wink at me right now. Anybody here going through any pain? Just wink at me right now. Anybody has any issues? Just wink at me right now. Don't wink at your wife because she'll get mad and think she's the trouble. <laughs> here is how you get through the trials and tribulations, the troubles. So at the end of the day, you'll be able to say, it's good. How do you get through troubles now? Here again, we may not have them today, but just put this in your pocket, uh, fold it up and set it in your back pocket, put it in your purse. You might not need it today, but you might need it on tomorrow. The psalmist says that when some people go through trials and tribulations and troubles, they just cave in to the problem. Say cave in. They, get, they just give in to the problem. They, they give up the fight. Uh, uh, they have a little wound on them and in them. And, and they just surrender to the problem. I already told you. You can't surrender to the trouble. You can't allow the troubles to control you. You got to control the trouble. But you cannot sit back and do nothing in order to see something come about. You just can't surrender, give up, throw up the white flag. There are some things that you still have to do. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says we are more than a conqueror, which means that we're called to keep on fighting. I, I don't care what the doctor said, keep on fighting. I, I don't care what the job says, keep on fighting. I don't care what the world says, keep on fighting. You just can't throw up a white flag and surrender. I don't care what has happened to you in the past. You've got to learn to keep, I wish I had a witness in the house. You've got to learn to keep on fighting. David said, yes, I'm going down through a valley called the shadow of death, but I'm not going to surrender because I believe that the Lord will prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies I'm not going to give up because I still believe that the Lord is who is he the Lord is my shepherd he'll guide me through barren land and even down through dark heart valleys called shadows of death that the Lord will walk with me and talk I'm not going to give up though I must go down through is there anybody in the house who had to go down through the valley but you didn't give up because you put the Lord in front of you and at the end of the day God put goodness and mercy behind you have I got a witness in the house somebody that shout yes somebody that shout yes Somebody shall thank you, God, because you brought me through the valley called Shadow. The devil should have killed me down when I was in the valley, but really he should have took me down before I was headed down in the valley because I discovered that when I was going down in the valley, there was somebody who walked with me and talked with me and tell me that I am his own and rocks me and holds me to, and comforts me and gives me peace in the valley. Have I got a witness in the house? You can sit down. Oh, I ain't gonna work that out. Say you cannot surrender to problems. You cannot surrender to troubles. A lot of you so worried about today about what's going on on the national scene with Mr. Trump. He sits in the White House. God sits on the throne. And Mr. Trump ain't the problem. You the problem. 
Can I tell you how? Instead of you watching CNN all day and all night, and MSNBC and Fox, listening to what they say, you should be on the TV and they should be listening to you. Y'all ain't get that. Y'all ain't get that. But you cannot surrender to troubles and to problems. Uh, there was a lady by the name of Miss Hath, uh, Havisham, Havisham, rather, Charles Dickens' great expectation, Mrs. Havisham. Mrs. Havisham, say Mrs. Havisham. Uh, she was getting married, you know. She was getting married uh, back in the early 1800s. Uh, Charles Dickens tells the story. She was getting married. She found the love of her life and everything else. And so the night before she was to get married, she was trying on her dress and trying on her makeup and all of that, getting her hair all fixed up. And she noticed that there was a note right next to her on the desk. And Mrs. Havisham opened up the note and it was from her fiance. He said, I'm not going to marry you. I never wanted to marry you. I only wanted to take your money. And he said, I won't be back on tomorrow to marry you. And she was so devastated that Charles Dickens says that she kept her wedding dress on for years. He shows a picture of Mrs. Havisham when she's young and pretty and then 20 some years later she is still sitting at the same desk before the same mirror but now her dress has turned gray. Cobwebs, cobwebs are all on her dress. Her face now looks like a skeleton because she had frozen in time and submitted herself to the problem of never getting married to this young man who never wanted to marry her. What is the tragedy? The tragedy is Mrs. Havisham never got up, picked herself up, but rather she surrendered to the problem. And that was the problem with Judas, you remember. Judas had hung himself for 30 pieces of silver. And the text says that he could have been saved. He could have been converted. He still had some more time. But what does he do? He goes off and hangs himself, surrenders to the problem instead of brushing himself off and moving on. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we got to learn how to move on. Now, while you have this kind of weak surrender, you have these other people who surrender in a very hard kind of a way. They hard, once they go through problems, trials, and tribulations, they never give anybody else a break. Have I got a witness? And they come up with this, never again will anybody ever do this to me. And, and that's the problem with some of us. We're just, too, we're just too hard on our surrender, what I call a weak surrender and a strong surrender. But there is a surrender like David has in this 119th Psalm. He turns calamity into asset. He turns calamity into capital. He turns calamity into gain. Instead of him becoming weaker, he becomes stronger. And what does he do? You may, might need to write this down and then I'll be finished here. What does he do? In the midst of his problem, he says, he says, he looks at his past. He looks at what has happened to him. And he says, it is good for me to have been in trouble because I've learned something about trouble. I I've learned that I need to learn more about who God is. Have I got a witness in the house? I I've learned that God is able to do abundantly above all that I ask or think, what is it that he's doing? He is not looking at the problem, but he's looking at the possibilities. What we need to learn to do when we have problems is keep our eyes off the problems and look at the possibilities that the Lord will make a way out of no way, that the Lord will be a friend in an unfriendly world, that the Lord will be bread when we're hungry, that the Lord will be water when we're thirsty, that the Lord will be our battle. And what are the possibilities? I may have a bad day today, but thank God that trouble won't last always. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to declare in the name of Jesus that things are going to be different. I may not have a damn today, but I'm going to walk down the street like I used to do when I was a kid, look along the gutters and find myself a quarter. Is there anybody in the house want to move to the land of possibility out of the land of problems you got to say i may not look good today my health may be bad 
today but you watch me in the next seven or eight days I'm going to look like a pot a picture of hell I may not have any money today but don't give up on me I'll be riding down in my new car with my new house with my new outfit because I believe in the audacity to hope that's what that's what Barack Obama wrote about the audacity to hope hope in the midst of a hopeless situation when you have given up on hope just keep on hoping you may not have a relationship today but just keep on hoping God's gonna bring the right person into your life you may be depressed today but trouble don't last always depression doesn't last always he may not be treating you right now but just keep on hoping there is possibility there is a bright side somewhere that's what my mama used to say she used to iron her clothes things were rough daddy didn't have money we didn't have food we had to go to the goodwill every day but my mama would say there is a bright side somewhere what does david do david says i know i'm going through the valley called shadow of death but i will come out on the other side of the valley is there anybody in the house today who want to declare that when i look back over my life i came out on the other side of the valley if that's you why don't you get stand on your feet and give god some praise for coming out on the other side of the valley yes yes i look back over my life i've had issues i've had concerns i've had problems but I have made it by the grace of God. And what am I saying to you? Whatever you're going through, there's about five, ten people in the church here. You're really going through something right now. But don't look at the problem. Look at the possibility. And every day that you wake up, God gives you and I another chance to do something great what else does he do he says it's good that I have had troubles I've had my troubles because it taught me something it taught me more to lean and learn about God watch this Sometimes God teaches us his ways through the good and the bad. Now, I don't know, James, what's going to happen in this nation in the next six months. But if it's, if it's going to be terrible, guess what? Something really good must be coming. It, do I have any possibility, people? Y'all heard that story about that little boy for Christmas time. His daddy promised him a pony. He wakes up on Christmas with his little brother. They're supposed to get a pony. And he runs to the room where the gifts were supposed to be. And what he finds, the first boy finds a whole room full of horse manure. Manure. Say manure. And the first little boy opens up the door and see all the manure. And he said... See that daddy disappoint us. We went, we were looking for a pony, and all we found is manure. The other little boy opens up the door, dives into all of the manure, and started coming back up breathing, saying, with all this manure, there got to be a pony in here. Y'all get it? Possibilities. And he believed that all things work together for the good. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God, take the person by the hand next to you. I don't know who that person is and those persons are, but God was trying to speak to you today. And we who have looked back on our life and over our life, we have discovered like David that instead of looking at all the problems start focusing in on the possibilities of what can happen and what God can do 
And I'm believing right now that somebody's situation is being shifted right now. That they're being moved right now. I don't know who you are, but God has already said, if you believe what the pastor said that I said, your situation is going to shift. But you got to look at the possibilities of what it is that you want God to do. The Bible says faith is about seeing that which you cannot see. It's about walking in places that you have not walked in. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith says what is not can be. What has been can shift to something else. But you got to also believe that God has put you in those situations temporarily so that you will learn to trust in him and to trust in his word and to learn of how he does things. Remember all things, good and bad, makes for great people. While Martin King went to the mountaintop, he'd also visit the valley of death on many occasions. But in visiting the valley of death, he ultimately experienced the high road of the mountaintop in Memphis. Just a few days later, they rioted, broke up the march and the movement. But a few days later, he stood and gave one of the greatest speeches of his life. Why? Because he took the bad mixed it with the good and God exalted him and promoted him. He wants to do the same thing with you right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these who are holding each other by hand, link their hearts, their mind, and their spirit. And for those of us who have come from a mighty long ways and have experienced many of the troubles, we pray, oh God, that you will remind us that you have given to us a testimony. The testimony came because of a test. And we passed the test, and so therefore we now have a testimony. Help us to tell others about what the Lord has done for us. And as we look back, we can say it is good for us to have been in troubles.